Hi everyone, I'm Luca, one of the co-creators of the Wick Editor, and today I'll be showing you how to use the more advanced features of the drawing tools. So now by this point in Wick, you're probably familiar with um, all the drawing tools on the um, toolbar, but I'll be going through some of their settings and showing you how they can be used um, in a more advanced way. So to start, you may notice that um, on the toolbar, as we select different tools, we get different options in the center of the toolbar. Depending on what we have selected, certain options are shown and others are not. Um, what we want to do is get an understanding for what each of these different options are. So let's start with the brush. With the brush selected, you'll notice that by default, our brush's first setting is set to 10. This is the brush's size. Now, um, 10 is a, a decent size for the default canvas, um, but your brush can go all the way down to one or all the way up to 100 in size. Um, setting it back to 10, our next option is smoothing. Now, you'll notice that the brush is pretty smooth to start with, but we can actually increase that smoothing value all the way up to 100. You'll notice that as we increase it, the brush has a little bit of lag behind the mouse, but um, your curves get significantly smoother. So um, if we have a really high value like 100, we'll get a really slow brush, but even sharp curves will be smoothed out nice and smooth. Kind of interesting. Last but not least in the brush settings, we have the enable pressure um, button. If you select this button and you're using a pressurized tablet or a device that has pressure sensitivity, you'll be able to get pressure sensitive drawing on the canvas. Moving on to the next tool, we have the pencil. Now the pencil is different to the brush because it creates strokes instead of fills. So when you're creating a shape like a brush path, if we select this brush path, um, you'll notice that the brush has a fill color and a stroke color. The fill color is kind of this interior section that you're seeing, and the stroke color is actually this exterior section. And right now it's super thin, but if we bump up the stroke size, we can actually see that along the edges, let me break that down a little bit, along the edges of this path, we have a stroke or an outline for this drawing. Pencil strokes are actually just strokes. Um, they, are, they don't have fills, so if we were to change the fill color, um, the shape will actually fill in between where these strokes are. Um, but by default, pencil strokes don't have a fill color. Um, changing the stroke color is what will change them. Um, it allows you to get uh, lines that um, increase and decrease along a single path. So if I make this four, I get a thicker version of that line um, than I had before. Um, by default, uh, the stroke size is set to one, uh, the stroke width. We can change this all the way up to 100, just like with the brush. And if we select it, we can change it in the inspector as well. Next up, we have the eraser. And now to demonstrate um, what the eraser is capable of doing, I'm going to draw a few brush strokes in different sizes and a few pencil strokes at different sizes. So here are our brush strokes. Here are our pencil strokes. Okay, and we're just gonna draw an eraser line straight through. Now you'll notice that these act very differently. For the paths that the brush drew, um, we're able to erase fine details. But for the strokes, we actually get these little kind of kind of curved circles um, erased out of it. And now why is that happening? Well, the uh, strokes are actually made up of um, just a single path, right? Uh, and the eraser is really just removing um, individual points off of that path as opposed to removing the entire um, fill of that path like it's doing with the brush. So if you're using the eraser with um, pencil paths, you might want to increase the size uh, so that you can, you can erase multiple pieces of that path at the same time. Um, however, if you're planning on using the eraser continually throughout what you're making, highly recommend using uh, the brush instead. 
All right, moving on to the shape tools. Now the rectangle has a few options. Uh, the first option on the left is the stroke width. So if I set that to 20, um, right about now, we can't quite see it until we select here what that actually did because our stroke color and our fill color are the same. So um, we're gonna change the fill color. We'll leave that black and the stroke color, we're gonna make it red just so we can actually visualize what's happening there. Um, and here I'm creating a black rectangle with a red outline or a red stroke. Um, this second option here is the corner roundness. So if I set that to 10, we're gonna get some really rounded corners on our rectangle coming up. The circle tool or the ellipse tool has um, stroke width as an option as well. Pretty straightforward there. And the line tool also has stroke width as an option. But the line creates only strokes. The line does not have fills, similar to the way that the pencil tool um, doesn't have fills. Now, as you're creating um, anything with the shape tools, if you hold the shift key down and drag, you'll get um, perfect rectangles or perfect circles with the ellipse tool. Kind of nice. This next tool, the path cursor, is really interesting. We're going to have a video dedicated just uh, specifically to the path cursor coming up um, soon. But if we draw a shape and then we use the path cursor, we actually are able to manipulate each individual stroke and point on that shape. So for instance, if I click and drag here, I can actually bend portions of the square that I just created to create custom shapes. This is incredibly useful, especially if you're using something like a trackpad or um, you're, not, you're not able to get access to a drawing tablet or a convenient or comfortable mouse. This is a great way to create uh, custom shapes and is a really common illustration technique. Next on the list, we have the text tool. Um, so the text tool, we can just click to add text um, and you can edit that text however you'd like. Um, we have a full text tutorial out if you want to see more about different pieces of the text tool as there's quite a bit of detail you can go into um, for text. And next on the bar, we have the fill bucket. So if we create a um, path that has an empty space in the center, we can actually use the fill bucket to fill that empty space. Super convenient, um, even if you're using things like the pencil tool, we'll still be able to fill that space with the fill bucket. Um, and even if lines cross from different paths, you'll still be able to fill empty spaces with the fill bucket that way. Last but not least, we have the eyedropper tool. Now the eyedropper tool is incredibly useful for selecting specific colors. You'll notice that as I hover the eyedropper tool over the canvas, it can find the white of the canvas. It can find the black of this fill, it can also find the red of this outline. If I select with the eyedropper, take a look at the fill color over here, it will change the fill color to the color I'm selected on. Now why is that useful? Well, if I want to record a fill color, right? If I want to select some objects, um, switch to the eyedropper tool, holding the D key, and click, I can actually change the fill color of several different objects at once. So incredibly, incredibly useful. Show that one more time. Select objects, hold down the D key, and press. I can actually get an eyedropper selection and change the color of different, um, different objects that I'm selecting. So that's a quick introduction to um, all of the uh, drawing tools and the settings that they have. Hopefully that was useful. Um, if it was, give this video a like. If you want to see other tutorials, give me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. And if you want to support the Wick Editor, head on over to our Patreon and become one of our patrons. All the donations there are used to support the development of this free and open source tool. Thanks so much for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.